Hello, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Walls uh, from QA Cafe and co-director of the Broadband User Services Work Area at the Broadband Forum. Uh, and I'm here join today with uh, Liam and John, and we are going to give you um, an update on the status of the open source USP agent um, that's recently went through version four and has version five coming out soon. Uh, and we're gonna go over the um, the features that were included and the ones that are, are coming up soon. And um, we thank you for joining us. Uh, we are using Zoom for this webinar, so uh, please ask questions at any time during the entire presentation, um, and we'll get to them uh, either as we go along or at the end. And um, please use the Q&A box. So if you go into your Zoom control panel, you'll see, see a thing that says Q&A. Uh, that lets us track the questions a lot better um, and make sure that we can answer them properly either before or afterwards. And if you find that uh, our faces for video are in the way of what you're trying to read, you, you can use Zoom to move those around too. <laughs> All right. So with me today is John Blackford from Comscope. Um, he is with me, the co-director of the Broadband User Services Work Area. Uh, he's also the chair of the Broadband Forum uh, and works directly on the OBUSP agent all the time. Uh, and uh, also is uh, Liam Clark from Incognito Software. Uh, he is the USP program manager there, um, also very involved in using uh, and deploying the, U the OB USP agent, and uh, also has a really great blog about USP that you should check out too. <laughs> All right, so this is what we're going to cover today. Uh, John's going to go into a little bit of the introduction um, of the, what the OB USP agent is for those people who aren't immediately familiar. Um, just a kind of a brief overview of what it is, what we've been using it for, what it does, what it doesn't do. Um, and then he's going to cover the latest release, which was uh, release for the Dunlin release. They're all named after birds. Um, and then Liam's going to go into a couple uh, of the, the newer features, including event-based notifications, um, how to uh, use the Docker commands and, and the deployment tools um, of OB USB agent. And then John's going to go back and give us a uh, little bit of a roadmap view of release five or the Eagle release. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, compliance testing and reporting when it comes to uh, the OBUSP agent and then uh, how you can get involved. And then we'll have a, a, a Q&A at the end. But like I said, feel free to ask them at any time. All right. Without further ado, John, why don't you take control? All right. Thank you, Jason. Uh, so start off with a little bit of an introduction on OBUSP agent. Um, so OBUSP agent, what does that actually, you know, break down and stand for? Um, the OB, you know, open broadband USP agent. Sometimes people refer to it as OBUSPA, kind of rolls off the tongue a little bit better than OBUSP agent. So, <laughs> um, so breaking that down, uh, the open broadband portion, um, open broadband is kind of like the open source arm of the broadband forum. Uh, there are several different open broadband uh, projects out there, and OBUSP agent is just one of those projects. Uh, USP, uh, user services platform. Uh, this is the specification that broadband forum is defined. It represents the next evolution uh, in remote management of control, uh, remote management and control of the devices. And then you have the agent aspect of it. Uh, an agent is a USP endpoint. It's responsible for exposing the service elements, which is essentially data model components uh, represented on an underlying device like a residential gateway or a set-top box or something of that nature. Uh, and this is done so that those service elements can be exposed to one or more management controllers. So that's, that's a nice breakdown of what OBUSP agent stands for and the different individual components of the name, but what is it really? It, it is an open source project that is focused on creating a reference implementation of the USP specification from the perspective of an actual agent. On the next slide here, we'll look at uh, the actual highlights of the 4.0 release. And you'll notice as kind of Jason mentioned in the uh, overview of the agenda that the, the 4.0 release was the Dunlin release. And that picture over there on the left is, the, uh, is a Dunlin bird. So in the 4.0 release, we 
focused on uh, a, a few different features. Uh, the first one being the bulk data collection expansion uh, to cover the USP event notification option. So the OBUSP agent already had uh, HTTP bulk data collection uh, supported, but it was then expanded to, for the other uh, USP defined uh, option there. There were also some controller trust enhancements that were added. The challenge response mechanism that's defined in USP, which allows for controllers to kind of elevate their level of permission, was added into the, the, um, the release four. Uh, the onboard request was also added, which kind of helps with the controller trust aspects uh, in being able to establish trust between a, an agent and a controller. And then there were some certificate enhancement as well. Uh, there's two kind of areas where certificates are maintained. One of them being the local agent uh, certificate table, which is mostly for uh, certs for the OBUSPA itself. And then the other being the secur security uh, certificate table, which is where all the other certs are, are kind of stored. Uh, the 4.0 release also added in support for the scheduled timer uh, command from the data model which is commonly used when you're doing some kind of scheduled operation on a device, like a firmware upgrade is a very uh, common use case for that. And then there's a uh, support for a reference following in the search expressions. So uh, kind of expanding our capabilities and what we can do with, with a search expression um, and, and being able to follow parameters that, that reference other parameters. Then there was a uh, Docker file uh, that was added uh, so that we could do um, Docker-based um, deployments. And Liam's going to have some more information on that in a, in a future slide. And then we also had various bug fixes and enhancements, a lot of them around the MQTT features that were added in the previous release, release 3.0. OK, and then on this next slide, uh, we will see some 4.1 highlights. Uh, so we've we created a 4.1 patch. We still call it part of the Dun Dunlin release, which you'll see another picture of a Dunlin bird over there. Um, but we've uh, you know made some bug fixes um, to kind of support some things coming out of the open source community. Um, so the first up was the ability to uh, support search expressions in the bulk data collection profiles. Uh, we already had the ability to do like um, parameters and object paths and partial paths, uh, but we didn't have search expression support in there. So we added that in, kind of help fill out the capabilities for bulk data collection. Then we had some extensions around the command line tool that helps um, show the data model um, details, uh, where we included the data model command and the event arguments in there as well now. There were some MQTT capabilities um, in uh, uh, additions to the data model. Um, so these were kind of enhancements to the MQTT uh, solution that's already there. And then we have various different bug fixes, mostly identified by the open source community. Um, several issues around MQTT were resolved. And then we also um, had some controller trust uh, fixes that we put in there around the challenge response uh, functionality that was introduced in 4.0. So all of that is in the actual official 4.1 release, but we've also been making some additional bug fixes since that official release, where we've been pushing out some bug fixes to the actual GitHub code base. Uh, they're not a part of the 4.1 release, but if you were to pull the latest code base, you would actually get those fixes as well. And then when we do the next official release, the 5.0 release, uh, they will have, um, those, those fixes in there uh, as part of that official release. And on that note, I'd like to turn it over to Liam and have him walk you through a few more slides. Thanks, John. Um, so one of the key design goals of USP is to enable real-time data telemetry for service providers. Um, the event-based notification feature provides a mechanism to subscribe and receive data up to like a one second interval. So as John mentioned, one of the highlights of done, done on the release was adding uh, the event-based notifications feature. Prior to this, many uh, will be familiar with 
uh, the bulk data mechanism for, for uploading on, on HTTP only. One of the, the feedback that we've had from our, the, the community and from service providers in general is uploading via HTTP is good and it does work, but in terms of scale, when you're trying to scale up to uh, you know, millions of devices, that uh, having having that even in, say, in a cloud deployment where, where you have many endpoints that can receive those HTTP packets, it can, it can from a design perspective, from an architecture perspective, uh, be difficult uh, to implement and for, 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 for scaling horizontally. So this is really one of the, the key features of of, of event-based notifications and having the ability to have a, you know, a, a pub and sub model where we can get these notifications uh, on, on demand. So in the diagram here, uh, we have uh, CPEs, as obviously many CPEs would be on the field running uh, the open source agent, OPSPA. One of the nice features about uh, the design of both of of, uh, of, of bulk data in general and, and, and event-based notifications as we can define profiles. So what this means is we can have a profile, uh, we can have multiple profiles depending on the pattern of data uh, that, we're, that we're looking to, to, to read from the CP itself. So for example, there may be one group within the service uh, provider organization that's interested in, in Wi-Fi data. Uh, you may want to retrieve that maybe every five minutes. Uh, whereas there's other groups within the organization, maybe just want some sort of usage usage information, they maybe only want to, to receive that data you know, maybe once an hour. So we can define these profiles um, on, on that basis. Now, uh, as I was mentioning from the bulk data HTTP, um, you normally would have you know, uh, some sort of HTTP uh, server that, that, that would get those requests. From an event-based notifications architecture, uh, like I see here, um, those these uh, these events, these push events, will be sent to a, probably a centralized broker, which would be typically either MQTT or Stomp, depending on on the implementation that the service provider have. We then have a bulk data collector that will listen onto that broker, uh, and then can distribute it. Um, really, depending on on the service provider's uh, requirements. Typically, what this will be is some sort of data lake, either an internal data lake or or something you know hosted on on the cloud. Uh, and then that will enable the, the data to be retrieved by the various users within the organization that want to, to, to have access to that. And the key here is, is having this real-time access to the data, which, which really is, um, is enabled. So on the right-hand side, uh, I have two examples just of, of, of what the reports would actually look like. They're just kind of small examples. So these are our two profiles. So the first profile just has three parameters. As you can see, uh, the, the format here is, is a JSON, JSON format. You can also have CSV and there's an IPDR option. But uh, from what I've seen, the majority of people either prefer JSON or, or, or CSV, primarily JSON, because then it's pretty easy to be able to you know, convert that into you know, some sort of NoSQL no type database like MongoDB or, 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 or equivalent. Uh, so here we have you know, the first, first profile is just collecting three parameters, the, the, the second uh, Profile is collecting four parameters and it has, has a, a UTC at the same time. Uh, next, from here, um, what you'd want to do is, is you know, how, how, okay, so I have my architecture, how do I actually define this on, on OBSP itself? Uh, what we can do is have the um, have, have, have it enabled, you know, so you need to enable it to, to be true. We also can then set up uh, some aliases, uh, name. The number of field resize, and if you're familiar with with HTTP bulk data uh, collection, um, the protocol here you need to change it to event based notifications. Uh, the encoding type I mentioned it could be CSV, uh, but here maybe we've got JSON, and then how often you want to report uh, the reporting intervals. So, like I mentioned, it can go down to, to one second if you would like. Um, here, got it defined as thirty seconds. How you would like the the, the reference the, the the data to be represented uh, and then the UTC. And use UTC uh, format, and then here we have the the name value pairs. So we have a name, a reference, you know, um, name and reference. So it's referencing what the actual parameters in the data model. So each of these, you know, have two bulk data profiles. They have a stomp connection and the alias. So if I go back to the previous slide, on the bottom one, you'll see there's an, you know the alias, the name, a connection, the alias for the stomp, a connection, the alias for the port. It's just a simple example, but it's it's showing how you would configure those on 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 the on the agent for the profiles, uh, and then there's there's some configuration parameters related to, to JSON itself. Uh, 
Next is, uh, is something that um, not many people realize, but also in addition to, to configuring uh, the, the, the bulk data profile itself, you also need to add, in, add a subscription because what we want to do is have the, a subscription set for a, an event type, uh, specifically for bulk data profile push events, uh, for those to be sent to the controller that you have defined. So that would be your MQTT or Storm controller that's already defined on your, on your OBSP agent. If you're not familiar with, with uh, ESP subscriptions, um, there's a number of nice features. We can have a persistence on here to say, okay, we only want this set how well the device is running. And if the device is, is restarted, uh, it could be set to true um, or, or false, uh, the time to live values. And then if there's some, some notification retry values on there as well. As John mentioned on, on, on the OBSP version four, we have a Docker file uh configuration that is now available so this is really good for a lot of different use cases primarily if, if you've never used obsp before and, and you want to get it up and running quickly i'd, I'd recommend you 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 know if you have a, a, a docker environment or get you know docker support on almost uh, you know desktop environments or server environment you can get it up and running quickly there's an example configuration uh, file called factory underscore reset example that can be used to define uh, you know uh, your, your basic set you know server like MQ, like if you have a stomp server username password uh, you can set it in there and get up and running really quickly once you have um, the docker file you can just you know build build to, to the obsp latest and then use the, the docker run commands here um, showing the, the commands to run internally i'll talk about msp in a second for, for, for protocol tracing and what I also find is if, if you don't want to run it in the Docker container, at least you have a really good, uh, you can just, the, 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 the Docker file is very readable. So you can go in and see for an Ubuntu image, how could I, how could I, um, you know, what, what are the dependencies, you know, what are the main commands I need to run, et cetera, to get that up and running quickly. So it's really, really useful for, for development purposes. There's also a um, really nice feature on, on OBSP where it has a really nice uh, uh, command line tool, minus C option. If you do minus C help, you, you'll show, you'll have a really easy to read help. So you can get all, you know, you can get parameter values, set parameter values, add objects, delete objects, store values on the data model, et cetera. Um, so here I have a couple of examples that you can, you, know, you can get a specific uh, value from, from, from your, uh, from the local agent or, 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 or part of the tree. And this is really useful for, for troubleshooting if you're, you're working with a controller or, or just you know, debugging uh, something in, in your, your environment and in, 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 your, in, your, in, your, in your lab settings to, to, to get things up and running. You can also use it for, for setting values and then for, for comparing uh, anything that you have in your, your development environment. And um, I also wanted just to highlight the minus P option, which I mentioned on, on, the, on the Docker command before. So this is for protocol tracing. This is really good, especially for 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 for, um, for vendors that are implementing new features in OBSP, specifically for for their hardware or on their device, uh, maybe adding new things to 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 a data model to ensure that the um, that your your implementation is valid and is, is matching ESP specifications. It's really good for for troubleshooting to be able to, to see you know the, what what is actually being sent on the wire to the controller, and it's also vice versa if you're working with you know a controller like Incognito then. Um, it, it, well, we're troubleshooting new devices, then you know, we, we can get the output from OBSP agent, uh, work back and forth and, and make sure the implementation is, is exactly what, what, we, um, what we require. With that, I'll, I'll hand back over to, to John. Thank you, Liam. Um, one second while we get the slide up. So yeah, I just wanted to go through the roadmap real quick um, before I turn it over to Jason to kind of go through the last few slides. Uh, the OBUSP agent group is currently working on release five, which is uh, called the Eagle release. We're looking at a Q4 time, timeline uh, this year. So here probably within the next uh, few months um, if, we, if we make our, our deadline. And uh, we're focusing mostly on the WebSocket MTP um, for this, this particular release. Um, we've been kind of working on the patch release a little bit and, and also pushing some other bug fixes, but the focus on release five is WebSocket. As we look forward into the next uh, couple releases, we'll see release six is kind of tentatively scheduled for mid next year. 
Uh, the focus will be on secure communications via the end-to-end -end session context uh, mechanism. And then we'll, we'll also be looking at a release seven uh, to be determined on when that'll hit, um, but we'll be looking in mostly to focus on any of the new features that are being introduced by USP 1.2, which will probably be delivered towards the end of this year. Um, so that's a look at the roadmap and I'll turn it over to Jason. Okay, uh, let's talk about um, compliance testing for a minute. So uh, as many people probably know, so USP is built of several different components or several different projects at the broadband forum that includes the data model, it includes the spec itself, includes OBUSPA, and it also includes uh, the certification and compliance program. Um, so there was a request from the open source community to have basically a baseline set of results uh, that have been tested against OBUSP agent uh, that people can look at and make sure that when they run the test themselves, uh, nothing about that has, has broken and they know what the baseline should be. Uh, so it's a little difficult just because uh, OBUSP agent is a, is a reference. Uh, and so a lot of the low level uh, functionality tests um, that are part of the compliance program or the certification program can't necessarily be included in that. Um, so it's not going to be a statement of certification of the OBUSP agent just because the agent is in its own box in terms of its scope. Um, and we can test things within that scope, but there's more things um, outside of that scope uh, that make up the certification, but that's okay. Um, we do have a, a, a goal in place uh, that we're working with the testing and certification committees at the Broadband Forum to get that baseline set of results uh, published um, published with uh, OB USP agents so that people have that, that uh, you know, that set of results that they can use as a comparison. So what we would want you to do in the future is, you know, take that set of results um, after you implement, uh, you, after you use OBUSP agent to build your own implementation um, and you, you want to either just run those tests or actually seek certification, which you should, um, you can, you know, you can run to make sure that nothing about the, the, uh, the baseline set of test cases that have definitely passed have, have changed and that any changes that you've made to OBUSP agent hasn't, hasn't um, broken those results. But we're working on that and uh, we should be should be getting it out soon, uh, hopefully as an artifact of each uh, release. All right. So as we jump into question and answer, there's just a couple of things I wanted to cover uh, in terms of resources. Um, if you don't know necessarily where to find the OBUSP agent, you can find it on Git GitHub in the Broadband Forum project. Um, you can um, go to the, uh, the, the, the wiki that we have, the public wiki that we have on GitHub as well has, uh, you know, the documentation and overview stuff, um, as well as the, the roadmap of the project. Um, obviously, if you are a Broadband Forum member and are interested in working on USP itself, um, please, by all means, get in touch with us. Um, the, the last thing we have here uh, is the participation agreement. So the nice thing about the open broadband projects is they follow a slightly different um, IPR rules than the Broadband Forum itself, um, but that requires you to, uh, to agree to a different agreement. But um, you know, it allows, it's a more open participation. Um, so you can, uh, you can get that through uh, that link right there, that bit.ly link we have right there. Um, and then our usual USB resources, everything you need to know can be found on usp.technology um, and uh, on usp-data-models. Um, and you can find links to the test plan and all those things. One final thing, we produce these webinars through the uh, Connected Home Council, um, these, these knowledge V-based webinars. Um, so if you're building a USP solution, uh, whether that's a controller and management solution or a, uh, or an agent that is supported in your product, in your products, please, um, come and join us at the connected home council. That's open to anyone, not just broadband forum members. And, uh, you can, uh, kind of see where we're going with, um, different collateral that we're producing more webinars like this that we're producing. Um, and you can find mechanisms to uh, either sponsor uh, different uh, events or promote your own products. All right. Let's turn over to Q&A because I see we got some. Uh, so Liam and John, if there's any you want to grab there, feel free to click on answer live. I see a bunch coming in right now. 
Um, I'll answer that first one. So the, there's a question about uh, bulk data, the, the event-based bulk data collection, the one that we've built as a USP notification, will it work over web WebSocket? Yes. So because it is built um, using the USP notification um, system, it will run over any of the message transport protocols that, uh, that are supported by USP. John, you want to go ahead on any of those? Uh, yeah, I'll take the first. I'll take the question on the uh, WebSocket support. Uh, is it only for the case where the USP agent is the client? Uh, and the answer to that is no. We are building it, uh, the WebSocket support for both uh, the agent being the client and the server. Uh, we're still kind of halfway through the, the uh, evolution of that code. We've got the client stuff uh, in there, but we're working towards the uh, server stuff next. Liam, there's one there you want to grab. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the question is in the future, do you foresee the OBSP is being used by hardware vendors as their integrated VSP agent, or will always be a reference implementation? So uh, the answer is yes. So there's a number of uh, hardware vendors that we're seen or working with and also service providers themselves they're they're that are using it obviously it is a reference implementation but it can be modified and you know those those changes can be kept internal or those changes can be can be upstream to the project as well so something for 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 you know any hardware vendors that would be good to to you know join the project and and, and contribute back to to the features to to the to the to the project as well John, what was that other one there? Yeah. Um, so the next one I see is, uh, is the example OBUSP test controller project updated to support MQTT and HTTP bulk data as well? Um, if not, any alternatives for testing the agent? Um, yeah, the, there is an OBUSP test controller that's kind of part of the, the full open source OBUSP agent project. It has kind of lagged behind. It does not support MQTT yet. Um, I think that it supports HTTP bulk data collection, but I'd have to validate that. Um, but uh, as far as other alternatives for testing the agent, um, uh, you know, there's there's definitely some um, vendors, uh, kind of typical ACS vendors that have solutions out there that that you could uh, work towards. Uh, um, getting some uh, help testing the agent uh, via proof of concepts or other um, other in, um, uh, uh, solutions. Uh, so that that would be one option. And the uh, the the official uh, certification tool does support all of the uh, all of the message transports. Yes, thank you, Jason. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, can we? Uh, so the, you're looking at the last question there, the, the, that yeah, yeah. just, came in. yeah. Can we make use of current level WebSocket agent implementation from GitHub? Uh, the, the code isn't quite to the point where we're ready to contribute it out to GitHub yet. It's still in uh, the process of being uh, developed. Uh, so we, we haven't pushed out the, um, the code for, for WebSocket, uh, yet. Uh, there's, there's a question that came in on chat. Hold on. Uh, for anyone who just put in a question on chat, if you can type it, uh, retype it into the Q and a box, then we can, it's easier for us to, to grab it there. The, the question is about, um, you know, how the OB USB agent deals internally with the other CPE components. So how, you know, how it can get the the data about that it's going to use for uh, the notifications. Um, and I think that's all in the documentation, right? About how to register data model objects and all that. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, there's a getting started uh, guide that's out there on the um, GitHub uh, page. I don't have a link to it uh, in this uh, slide, but 
if you go to the main GitHub um, link there, it's one of the uh, it's one of the files at the top level that's get, getting started. And it has details about um, how you integrate into the actual underlying data model. Uh, and that, that kind of explains um, the details around how we get the um, value change notifications as well. Okay, we have another question about uh, about notification streaming. The question is, uh, will it be possible to support notification streaming from multiple clients in real time uh, without a store and forward function? So it's not necessarily dependent on store and forward. So the way that uh, USP notifications work is it, it is contained in a message um, and that push event is triggered um, uh, to, and it, it's basically like Liam showed you, you have to have a, a subscription to it. So the agent will, uh, the agent will send that notification to the controller that has, has subscribed to it. And one of the, uh, in the, in the ways that we are specifying the, um, the event-based notification for bulk data collection is that the controller that created it is the only one that can receive it for security reasons. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't know when you, when you say streaming, you know, it's, it's, it's not in the, in the case where it's just uh, receiving a constant set of data, you know, each, each um, collection of data will be associated with that push event. I hope that kind of answers your question. But you can definitely do it for multiple clients. That's that's fine. All you do is set up uh, set up the profile you want uh, on each of the agents, and then make sure that there's a subscription uh, set up on each of the agents, and you should get it all. All right. Um, any other questions? Oh. Uh, is there a USP SDK uh, for protocol handling and, and um, encoding, decoding messages available? Um, I think that that's basically what you're getting, right, uh, John and Liam? It's you know the uh, the, the package that you install uh, with uh, with OB USP agent. It has everything you need. Yeah, that, that's definitely part of what the OB USP agent is. Is it's the ability to handle. Uh, all of protocol messages, which are done via Google protocol buffers uh, across whatever message transfer protocol. And it does the encoding and decoding of those messages. So that, that is kind of the bulk of, of what the uh, agent is, um, plus some you know, additional features and functionality that's kind of USP specific features. And there is, there is a set of dependencies, obviously, because we're using other open source things as well, but that's all. It's all included when you, when you. Yeah, there are a few yeah. typical open source uh, projects that we've included. You know, like OpenSSL, uh, some some other ones uh, related to the actual message transfer protocols that we're we're working with. All right. Uh, as there's uh, any other questions coming in, John and Liam, is there, is there anything? that you think um, that it, now that we've gone through this whole presentation, is there anything else that you guys wanted to mention that you think we might've missed there? <laughs> uh, no, I think we've covered everything. Just to, yeah. to, for anyone who's interested, please uh, please join the calls and uh, we'll be able to, to get as many people contributing to, to the project as possible. Indeed. And if you do have any questions about getting involved, um, we have uh, our member coordinator, Rhonda Heyer on the call right now. And uh, she can tell you all about how to do that stuff. <laughs> uh, the one other thing I will say, I did mention it a little bit was, um, you know, getting involved with USP and the data model projects themselves. Um, you know, obviously that's open to broadband forum members and we're having calls twice weekly uh, on all that. And we are looking to get some stuff out the door uh, by the end of the year when it comes to the newer versions of the data model. Uh, and USP and the uh, certification test plan. 
Uh, there's a question, are there any commercial deployments of Wobi USPA to reference? Uh, yes, they are out there. <laughs> Uh, we have one last question. Uh, will complete controller trust support be in the next release? Uh, there are a few things that are not uh, in there that we are looking forward uh, to in future releases. Uh, the next release is really focused on WebSocket. Um, there's not a whole lot left in controller trust, there, but there are a couple things. I think there's like MDNS uh, discovery mechanisms uh, as well as uh, I believe the dynamic nature of the um, the access control uh, aspects. Uh, right now, the access control aspects are kind of static in nature. They're built in at um, compile time. Uh, so when you build uh, the system, but uh, we do have a roadmap to look into making those more dynamic so that you can change them via add object and delete objects. Excellent. Uh all right, there, there is one last question here that is a, a segue back into what I was saying before. Uh, there's, a, there's a feature request that would, that would effectively be a feature request to either the data model or to the USP specification. We love that stuff. So if there is stuff that you, um, you know, sort of new functionality that you think would be incredibly useful to your deployment that you would like to see uh, implemented in USP, um, like I said, reach out to, uh, you know, if you're a Broadband Forum member, you can you can immediately start participating um, just by signing up uh, for the Broadband Forum Wiki uh, and communicating with uh, John and I um, as part of the, the Broadband User Services work area, and we can get you started on submitting issues and feature requests and stuff like that. Um, and we absolutely welcome it. Um, we have a lot of fun building standards, so please, uh, please by all means, get involved and um, tell, us, tell us your ideas. All right. I think uh, I think that's good for now. Um, the usual questions, you know, will will you be able to have access to these slides? Yes, uh, we will put them together in a PDF after this, and also the video of this webinar will be made available. Um, and if you have any further questions, um, you can always reach out directly at info at broadband-forum.org um, or email, uh, you know, any of us, Liam, John, myself. Uh, directly we're always happy to answer your questions one other thing is that there is a broadband forum uh slack and uh that you can sign up for if you're a broadband forum member and we have a usp questions channel on there that uh that people use pretty frequently to ask kind of more in-depth technical questions about how things are supposed to work um, and that's one of the easier ways that we can answer your questions all right anything else liam john Rhonda, you're out there. Anything else you want to mention before we go? <laughs> I'd just like to say, you know, please reach out to us at info at broadband-forum.org and, you know, let us know if your questions and come get involved with us. Well, it'd be great to have you. All righty. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, we will definitely have more of these in the future going into various details about uh, one or more components of the user services platform uh, or the TR181 data model and what makes it all work together. Uh, so I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy your days. Thank you.